At first, I thought the Chinese were opening the door to a new propulsion system, and releasing their own version of the mysterious TR-3B. Unfortunately, this craft is a bit of a naval car rehash, and it's basically a rotorcraft. Nevertheless, a lot of hype is still surrounding the prototype with an alleged 400 mile per hour capability, thanks to its two turbojet engines. Now, I do doubt that this flying saucer will go half that speed, but its maiden flight will be taking place in 2020. But this is just the beginning, and there's some really weird aircraft being released right now. So let's begin the top 7 countdown. Beginning at number 7, it's Celera 500L. One of the weirdest propeller-driven aircraft is shrouded in a bit of mystery. Its inventor, William Otto, claims that it's one of the most fuel-efficient planes, with an estimate of 5 miles to the gallon. It also has a proclaimed 65,000 foot ceiling and a 500 mile per hour speed. I'm not going to take those numbers too seriously. Now I personally don't think that this plane will get anywhere close to the highly efficient PC-12 plane, and it's also worth mentioning that there has been no logged flights just yet. We get to number 6 and it's the SB-1 Defiant. Now we move on to a pretty reputable aircraft being developed. The SB-1 is currently the Sikorsky and Boeing's entry for United States Future Vertical Lift program. It features coaxial rotors and a pressure prop for just over 287 mile per hour max speed. It can accommodate up to 12 troops, 4 crew members, and additional supplies for medevac operations. The rotorcraft is a fly-by-wire system and can perform large angular attacks along with precise attitude controlled capabilities. Once again, the craft is just a tech demonstrator for now, and this could actually lead to a more advanced platform. We get to one of my favorites, and it's the Lilium Jet. Probably one of the most dramatic and intriguing aircraft stems from Lilium. I covered this aircraft before, and it's an all-electric, 36-engine VTOL aircraft. Even though it peaks out at 186 miles per hour, the jet is still pretty impressive from an engineering standpoint, since it can carry up to five passengers and a pilot. The company plans to have a mobility surface by 2025, which incorporates an on-demand app. Ultimately, there are countless VTOLs emerging, and Lilium is probably one of the most promising concepts, which is already performing impressive test flights. We get to number 4, and it's the HY4. I bet you have never heard of this one. This also may be one of the weirdest aircraft that has been made in recent years. The HY4 is a four-passenger, zero-emission transport, running on hydrogen fuel cells. Now, the plane is relatively slow, topping out at 125 miles per hour, but it can achieve over a 900 mile range. Its obvious and most strangest future is its twin fuselage design, with each cabin holding two passengers. Ironically, this plane went widely unnoticed being a hydrogen powered craft, but it does prove that fuel cells do actually work in the air, and some of the longest flying drones actually run on fuel cells. It's also worth noting that hydrogen powered aircraft is not a new thing. And one example of this is a project which used a converted B-57 jet. This jet could transition from hydrogen to jet JP-4 fuel. Once again, this leads to the efficiency of actually producing hydrogen. And it's a really intriguing and long topic, so I'll cover that in a different video. We get to the dramatic number 3, and it's the Flying Wayne by Yves Rossi. Now this one confused me a little bit, because I did not know how to categorize Mr. Rossi's new flying machine. His new craft can autonomously take off and land, which I have to admit is probably the neatest thing I have seen for a while. Anyways, you basically strap yourself into this thing, turn on the four Jetcat turbine engines, and fly at 112 miles per hour. Just keep in mind that Yves Rossi is a military trained pilot and flew multiple aircraft including the F5 and 747. So it would probably take me less than 2 minutes to crash this thing into a building. Now the only other thing which even comes close to this is the flyboard. And this was invented by Frankie Zapata. Now this green goblin glider can also do over 100 miles per hour. It features an auto hover mode with triple redundant flight controls. Either way, the wingsuit or the hoverboard are pretty epic flying machines. Now we get to something that's out of this world, and it's the Dream Chaser. Reminiscent of the iconic space shuttle, the Dream Chaser has been in development for quite a few years. Initially, the Dream Chaser would be capable of carrying up to 7 people into low Earth orbit, 
but recently it's being built as a cargo spacecraft. The latest version is being developed by the Sierra Nevada Corporation, and the craft is being hyped as one of the most complicated and expensive systems ever built. Now the spacecraft can be reused for 15 or more times and deliver up to 5,500 kilograms or 12,000 pounds of payload into low Earth orbit, which will typically be the International Space Station. The only catch here is that it actually needs a launch vehicle, so a really big rocket, and the cargo version should be operational by 2021. Now we get to the iconic number one, and it's the Straddle Launch. I had to include the biggest aircraft in the world because it's a pretty drastic design with pretty important implications. The Straddle Launch has a wingspan of over 385 feet and a maximum takeoff weight of 1.3 million pounds, making it to be the new flying fortress. It's powered by six Pratt & Whitney engines, which are the same ones used in the Boeing 747-400 and Airbus 310. So it is indeed capable of carrying very large payloads. So initially the aircraft was made to launch the Dream Chaser and orbitable rockets. But the story around the Straddle launch has taken a sharp turn, with the recent passing of the founder Paul Allen. Superior's capital management has since acquired Straddle Launch Systems and now are focusing on performing high-speed test services. This means that the Straddle Launch is still up in the air. And with my misuse of a pun, ironically this translates into a positive note. Because the Straddle Launch did actually perform its one iconic flight. Regardless, I hope that we do see the plane fly again because it is truly a one-of-a-kind aircraft. So once again, thanks for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.